Have you ever wondered how the Shona, Rora, or Lobola process is like? In this video, we are going to explain to you step by step all the processes involved in the Shona, Rora process. Marriage is integral to the Sona culture of Zimbabwe. Though there are various ethnic groups that make up the Shona tribe, all view marriage slightly different. One of these ethnicities is the Zezuru, who regard marriage as a unifier of families. The communities involved in a marriage share their very existence in that reality and they become one people. The centrality of marriage among the Shona people is experienced through the continuous coming together of people through this rite. A man marrying a woman from the Shona culture has to observe the Rora or Lobola. This is a sign or show of love and affection when a man serves up and marries his beloved. There are many ways this can be done but I will dwell on the general procedures followed assuming that no Musengabere or Kutema Ugariri or Kutizira has been done. In Zimbabwe, Rora takes place in a number of stages and each stage has its own traditions and small amounts to pay. The process can differ from place to place due to the fact that in the Shona culture there are different ethnic groups. When a male and a female fall in love in the Shona culture, they just don't start a family. That's regarded as a bad thing in the Shona culture. When they fall in love, the first thing is for the girl to be introduced to the male's family and also vice versa. This process of introduction is facilitated by two very important people. One, aunt from the male's family, and the second one is aunt from the female's family. These are the two important people that facilitate the communications between the two families. Traditionally, these introductions are supposed to be done six months prior initiating the Rora process. After family introductions, the next step is to exchange clothes as a sign of commitment between the lovers. In Shona, this is called Kuchinjana Numbi. Well, we can say it's equivalent to proposing. Now, people rarely do it and have copied the Western culture of giving each other the proposal ring. This process is facilitated and done in the presence of aunts from both families. After Kuchinjana Numbi, the next step is to ask for a date to conduct the Rora or Lobola process from the female's family. This process is facilitated by the aunts from both families and the liars between the two families that are about to be brought together. When the Rora or Lobola date is agreed on, a few things are done. The male has to find himself a negotiator or monyai. This person will be the one who will be doing the talking and mediating with the wives to be's family during the Rora proceedings. The second thing to be done is the female's family has to compile a grocery list that will be given to the male's family for them to buy for the big Rora day. They also have to compile the list of Rora charges to be charged male's family and we will go through this shortly. Traditionally, this grocery is supposed to cater for the food that will be eaten by the people during the Rora proceeding as the two families celebrate the union of their children. But it seems nowadays the grocery list being compiled are so unreasonable. It's as if they want to open a supermarket store for another day. On the Rora day, events happen in an orderly manner. The Rora is always done at the female's house. When the males or Mukwasha's family arrive, they wait outside the yard of the bride's house until they are brought inside. The male or Mukwasha in question does not enter inside the house where the proceedings will be happening. The negotiator or Munyai will represent him and negotiate on his behalf. The Munyai or the negotiator is then invited to enter the house along with two or three or more people from the Mel's or Mukwasha's family and the following events will occur in the Rora proceedings. The first stage is the introductions. This stage involves the Munyai who is the go-between when a man goes to pay the bride at his future wife's family, dating to the family his intentions and purpose of the visit. Usually they have to say which in English translates to we have come here to marry one of your daughters. Here they ask who they mean. Once this is done, 
the bride's family will ask the daughter if she knows the people who have come to ask for her hand in marriage. The second stage is the grocery list stage. A list is given to the groom prior to the ceremony. This will be a list of groceries required to bring to the family. The items are then checked and should match that on the original list. For example, if it's 5 kg of sugar, you should bring exactly that, not less. Adhering to the stated requirements of the new in-laws is a show of respect from the new son-in-law. It is often advisable to do exactly as stated or better to ensure smooth relations between the newly united families. Some families are more tolerant than others. A lot of tolerance is needed as this is not a money-making ceremony as most people have turned it into. The third stage is payment preparations. After handing over the groceries, the groom's family is allowed in and shown where they will sit for the rest of the ceremony. The bride's family, through their spokesperson, asks the munyai for ndiro, which is a wooden plate. The plate is placed somewhere in the center of the gathering. All the money that will be charged during the proceedings will be placed into this plate. A process called sunungura homwe, or loosening of the pocket, or alternatively, vuramuromo, or opening of the mouth, follows. This process involves paying a small fee, which is charged by the bride's family for the greetings of the guests. At this point, some humor is introduced through fines, e.g. a fine may be imposed on the groom for not sticking to the original date of the ceremony or arriving late to the ceremony. This segment of the ceremony puts the Munyai and the groom's family at ease in preparation for a long day of negotiations. The fourth stage is the payment stage. The process of Aurora negotiations can be long and complex and involves many members from both the brides and the grooms extended families. So these days, due to our busy nature in some parts, it's been shortened and made less complex. The payment stage has quite many stages which can even take place in some instances. The payments are grouped in two main sub-processes which are one, jirewa rewa shababa. These are gifts for the father. This stage involves payments that are for the bride's father. A guardian or a representative can accept the charge for these if the paternal fathers are deceased or not known, which in the old days had a lot of very long sub-processes and has been shorted. The main payment is this payment is to acknowledge how the father put up with the playful antiques of his daughter as a child or how she pulled his beard as she sat on his knees during her childhood. The amount paid for the father for the matekenyandevu child is negotiable. Stage 5 is jirewarewa jamai, which is gifts for the mother. This is also the second part of payments. Same as the processes of jirewarewa shababa, the payments are strictly for the bride's mother. A guardian or a representative can accept charge for these if the maternal mother is deceased or not known. The gifts for the mother of the bride in the old days included things like mbereko for carrying the bride in a pouch or sling when she was a baby, mafukizadumbu for covering the belly. This is alternatively translated as carrying the baby in the womb or tucking the baby in with a blanket when she was still young. These are now charged under this blanket term due to the complexity of the past processes as well as the fact that people may have even forgotten exactly the name of these processes. The amount paid for Jire Warewa Jamai is non-negotiable. Whatever is charged, Mukwasha or the future son-in-law is supposed to pay. No negotiations. Stage 6 is when the groom's family bring in Mbuzi Yedare or Mbuzi Yechimanda. This stage involves the groom bringing in a live goat to be slaughtered during the payment process. The goat is cooked and served at the end of the ceremony. If the groom does not bring a goat, he is required to make a payment instead, which is then shared equally between the young males in the bride's household. The next stage is Mari Yemusikana Otete, which is gifts for the bride. The woman being married is required to pick some money from the plate for herself. This money in some instances can be set by the aunt or the woman's sister. This is a small allowance for Mari Inonongwa Nemuskana for the purchase of household or cooking utensils and this amount is given to the bride. If they are younger sisters or siblings, she may give them a portion of the money. This money is for all the cooking that will have taken place for the party which the groom will finance after the ceremony is concluded. Usually, this money can be returned by the woman or her future husband to cover the other payment that would follow. The next stage is the Rusambo or Rora stage. This is the most important stage which is called Rusambo. Paying Rora 
is called kuvisa pfuma, giving or parting with wealth. Aurora is wealth and its quantum must be consistent with wealth. This stage can only be reached if the stages mentioned earlier have been fulfilled. The bride price varies and nowadays factors in things like social class of both the groom and the bride. This, however, can be paid as a part payment as long as some form of payment is made. If the groom fails to come up with any part payment for the resemble, then the whole process becomes now in void and will have to be started again at a later stage and he will not be given his bride. Sorry man, no why for you. After the resemble stage, the next stage is called Danga or livestock in English. This stage traditionally is a gift of cattle and nowadays it is most commonly paid in cash. Although the amounts will still be representative of a fair market price for the cattle, normally the number is between 7 to 8 cows depending on how the family charges and in those the most important one is one for the mother known as Mombe Yomai. This should always be a live cow that the groom gives to the mother-in-law. The cow is accepted to produce an offspring as proof that the union has been blessed. Also, our belief, the most powerful ancestors that protect us are the maternal ones. Mudzimu wamai ukadambura mbereko. If maternal spirits let go, it spells disaster. To keep these spirits happy and attentive, there is need to follow the Mombe Yomai protocol to the letter. To give Mombe Yomai is to acknowledge this spiritual symbolism. Once the offspring of the Mombe Yomai is weaned, it is then expected that the cow can be slaughtered by the bride's family and eaten by both families just as thanksgiving and strengthening both the couple's relationship as well as the family as a whole. This will take place two to five years after the Lobola process. This stage is dependent on the Rusambo stage and if Rusambo is not available or a portion of Rusambo hasn't been paid, then they cannot proceed to this current stage. In the old days, before people started charging each other money, Fuma Aurora consisted of cattle, mapaza, which are horse, machira, which are clothes which the son-in-law would buy for the bride's family as an indication of rich agricultural community. After this stage, then comes the majasi or clothes stage. This stage also dependent on the Rusambo stage. It is the gift of clothes that the groom is expected to buy for his in-laws. As stated, after Rusambo has been paid and the bride's family are happy, the groom and his party will then be invited and welcomed into the family Kupinzwa Mumusha. The groom will then greet the in-laws as a new groom, no longer as a prospective groom or stranger, but as a member of the family. With the special traditional clapping greeting called Kuroba Gushi and is permitted to be a part of the household. At this stage, he will be given a list of items of clothing that both the mother and the father require, normally full attire from top to bottom. After this stage, one of the last things that are done is for the groom's family to ask for permission to have a wedding to their daughter in Shona, which is called Kukumbira Muchato. After this process is done, this marks the end of all uh, the formal proceedings of the Rola process on that day. And afterwards, people will celebrate the union of the two families. So these are all the stages that are involved in a Rora or Lobola process in the Shona culture.